Danley picks his way, finds the hole, runs well, it gets to the 20-yard line. Puts Auburn in second and short with Rusty Beasley making the tackle. Let's go downstairs to John Dockery. Doc, what do you got? You know, Brent, one of the reasons that Georgia's defense is having so many problems is their chief rusher, the man they call the sack, Richard Tardis, has a splint on his right ankle. Can you see it right there? He damaged the ligaments. I asked him before the game how he was. He said, I'll give it a shot, but it's hard to tell. You see him in there in special situations, but that's one of the reasons Georgia's having their problems on defense at the moment. Now back to you, Brent. Dooley also under pressure from Danley, who already has rushed for 96 yards. Auburn shows the wishbone on second and one. And Slack keeps it and rolls to the right side. Cuts inside the 10-yard line. He's down at the nine with Aaron Chubb, the first to hit him. Reggie Slack is an athlete. Watch the fake here, and he's a big guy. He does not look like he's running fast because he is a large man, but he is. And then number 86, Reeves, puts a nice block on the defender for the easy first down. Last time out, Auburn self-destructed with penalties, but not this time. Jamming it right down George's throat. Danley stuffed that time himself by the middle of that door of defense. Brent, when Auburn has struggled this year, it has been inside the 20-yard line. When they get down here, Pat Dye's team needs to score touchdowns, not field goals. So a lot of heat the young quarterback. Down by seven points. Second and long. They are inside the 10-yard line, so it's second and goal. slotted Wigand in motion slack rolls in that direction has Danley out tosses to Tillman for the touchdown drive started we said that lawyer Tillman had not touched the ball yet today they get it in his hands twice including the six pointer and Auburn now only a point behind with Lynn Lyle set up the tie it's a whole new game Brent every quarterback has a favorite receiver and sometime in the game he's going to find a way to get him the ball Reggie Slack does this on the rollout. Pretty good defense by the Dogs. He pulls up and finds the big 6'4 wide receiver in the corner of the end zone. Had a little hum baby on that, too. Oh, yes. Yeah. Zipped it to him. Tied at seven. We'll be right back. Auburn looking for a Southeastern Conference title and a possible trip to the Sugar Bowl. Chris Dickinson with the ball on the tee for Auburn. And one of the deep men. There he is, the big fella. Tim Worley. How's he done as a kick returner, Pat? He has one kickoff return for a touchdown this year. He's also thrown two touchdown passes. Ball blows off the tee, so they'll have to re-tee it and start all over. They're on the sideline talking to his assistants. Pat Dye, who has done a marvelous job. He has a program here at Auburn now. They just reload. Line drive headed out of bounds, and that'll be a penalty. One of the things about Pat Dye, there have been controversies down here in the past, and certainly I'm not here to defend him over Brent Fullwood, who was not going to class when he let him play in the bowl game that year, but it is kind of interesting to note that after the last professional football season, 15 NFL players came back here to Auburn, Alabama, and resumed their studies. I think that speaks pretty highly of of the program that's being run down here. And those fellows don't graduate. They come back and study some more. And that was 15 of them were on this campus. It's one of those schools you might tend to underestimate academically, too. Things like the veterinarian school is one of the best in the country, along with Cornell. Dickinson rips it to Worley. He's got it at the goal line. 10, 20, 25, sideline, out of bounds. 34-yard line. 
So tomorrow, 1230 Eastern Time, we'll start our NFL coverage. You'll see some of those Auburn grabs. Chicago and Washington. And Mike Ditka says he'll stalk that sideline. The elevator trip, too much. We'll talk to Iron Mike. Philadelphia at Pittsburgh tomorrow. Tampa Bay at Detroit. Then the late games, the Giants are down at Phoenix. And New Orleans takes on the Los Angeles Rams. First and ten now for Georgia. Warner, the tight end, moves over to the left side. Henderson is in front of Hampton. Johnson to throw on first down, out of bounds. Incomplete. He wanted Henderson the fullback, and he was going out of bounds. And Alvin Mitchell doing a good defensive job. LSU clinches at least a tie for the Southeastern Conference title with that win. Alabama on the comeback after losing that tough one. Second down and ten. Now Hampton moves back to the tailback spot. Johnson with time incomplete. Too far in front of Warner is tied in. And the important thing, though, here for Wayne Johnson is that they're throwing the ball. He's going to have to complete those kinds of passes to win this football game because you're just not going to be able to run it all the time against that Auburn front. There's the play from the sideline. That's Arthur Marshall telling Wayne Johnson. Johnson, the senior quarterback, good size, 6'4", 213. Brings his offense up to the line, looks at that defense. Needs 10 yards on this third down play. We run the quarterback draw. Three of one, out to the 40. Spins, but he's short of that first down. Shan Morris, the son of a former Bear great, Larry Morris, making that stop on the Georgia quarterback and forcing the punt. And the Auburn defense is beginning to really take the run away. And again, for Georgia to win this game, they're going to have to complete some passes on first down. Joey Hester back to punt again. And Wasden to return. We've got nine and a half minutes in the first half. Under pressure that time. On the bounce, and Wasden's going to let it roll. The dogs get a roll. Down inside that 15-yard line. So we'll take a break after that 44-yard punt. We'll come back with Georgia and Auburn all even. Big time statistics that he is compiling out there at Oklahoma State. And he is starting to come on strong now. His quest for that Heisman Trophy. Here it is, first and ten for Reggie Schlack and Auburn. They're tied at seven with Georgia. Strong, the new fullback, leading Danley. Great defensive play by Barrett. Well, Brent, very few of us get to live our dreams, but Rusty Beasley, the free safety, as you watch here, the offensive line comes off. But 58, Barry, comes right in from the backside. Again, got the quick inside penetration because that first step of his was so good. And that's why he made the play in the backfield. And Strong quickly comes out, and they load up with three wide receivers. Wigan, Tillman, and Wasden for slack. And Reggie's going to put it up again. Great catch at the 35-yard line. That was Shane Wasden, the freshman from Selma. 5'9", 176 pounds. What Auburn has done with their passing game is done a nice job of throwing the ball short, and then they stretch it vertically. They threw a couple out passes, they threw a couple underneath passes, and then this time the deep throw to Wasden. Slack impressive here in the last two series for the Tigers. Completed his last four balls. Now has a first and ten. Ball out on the Auburn 37-yard line, and Slack calling a timeout. He came up to the line, saw something he didn't like, and so he will go over and confer with Pat Dye and the assistant coach. We'll take a break. We have eight minutes to go in the first half. Seven all.
does look healthy. You know, a couple years ago, he blew out his knee. They had to bring his brother Otto in for him for a couple of games. I thought maybe War Eagle there <laughs> devoured him for a moment. I was kind of concerned. Here on first down, Danley blasts up into that Georgia defense, and Demetrius Douglas takes him on, and then Hiawatha Berry comes in to clean it up. Danley goes over 100 yards here in the first half. Now that is 17 carries for 101 yards, his third career 100-yard game. So we came into this game singing the praises of Worley, and we may leave talking about number 32, Stacy Danley. And remember, he gets stronger as the game goes on. Worley with 42 yards rushing. Six yards for the first down. Strong the fullback. He is in front of the backup tailback now as Danley comes out and James Joseph, who is the fullback, switches back the tail. And Rusty Beasley made the tackle. Pat, a short time ago, you started a story about Beasley. Well, Rusty Beasley is one of those guys who's actually living his dream. He grew up not far from the Georgia campus. He's the free safety. Probably not big enough or strong enough and fast enough to play free safety, but he's one of those guys you always find room for you on your team because he plays hard and gives you 100% every down. First and 10 for Auburn. Ball at the Georgia 47-yard line. Joseph back at fullback, and Danley returns. And Slack on first down. Buys time, and it is complete inside the 40-yard line. It goes to his tight end, Sellers. Boy, if Sellers were able to gather himself, he had a lot more yardage there to be gained, but he couldn't slow himself down, and he ran out of bounds. First down passing has been effective so far for Auburn in this game. Very key in what they have done. They've thrown some balls short over the middle. They've thrown the out pattern to Tillman, and then the deep ball to Wasden. Second and short. Tillman is out to Slacks right. Wasden to the short side. Joseph, the fullback, straight ahead. And it will depend on where they spot the ball. Could have been a first down. And I give James Joseph, number 10, a lot of credit for Auburn. He is the guy who started the year as the tailback was going to be the star runner. But then when they needed some real blocking power in the fullback position, they moved him there. He never complained, made the switch, has made a big, big difference in the running attack. They'll bring the chains out to measure. I think he came here because of Bo Jackson. I think they called him Bo Peep in high school. He grew up watching Bo Jackson not too far from the Auburn campus. Really a pleasant kid. Always plays with a smile on his face. Auburn with a fresh set of downs and moving again. They trailed early, 7 to nothing. Rallied to tie the game at 7. Behind Slack and Lawyer Tillman. And now on the move again. Six and a half minutes left in the first half. Slot to the right. Wagan and Tillman. Slack forced out of the pocket. On the move with a penalty marker down. He throws to Joseph underneath for a couple of yards, but there was a penalty marker tossed back near midfield. Now, Brent, I know you and I talked about this all week, and if you're a Georgia Bulldog fan, this game is going the way you want it. You want it just to be close, to hang in there, because Vince Dooley's philosophy for 25 years is to keep it close and win it in the fourth quarter. Offensive lineman, he'll be first down again. Another big penalty against the Auburn Tigers. They self-destructed on an earlier drive because of penalties. This one will move them back on the other side of midfield. They're back on their own 48-yard line. They have to get to the 27 for a first down. In this situation, you can't turn the ball over. They have Wright, Wasden, and Tillman as their wide men. And Slack stands in the pocket. Dropped by Tillman coming across underneath at midfield. Well, the coaches, Larry Blakeney, the offensive coordinator for Auburn, thought the tight end was going to be open today. He has been. That time, Tillman really played like a tight end for the short route, but he dropped the ball. You know, I saw some of the pros 
talking the other day about why receivers drop balls and they are speculating that you should not wear gloves because you lose some of that touch that is so necessary Tillman that time failing to hang on slack back again waiting waiting now he takes off and drops it and it is bobbled again here by Joseph who was close to being out of bounds anyhow he wasn't wearing gloves, but you know Vince Dooley said the same thing, the same thing this past week about his receivers wearing gloves. When you think about it, if you're just out playing the catch, yeah. there, there is more feel. I know in cold weather you've got to wear the gloves, but I always thought it was unusual to see players in great weather situations like this wearing gloves. I understand them when they wear it on AstroTurf to protect against the burn, but not here on a grass field. Now it is third down. 25 yards to go. That's Wagan, 14. So they've got three wide men on the right side of the formation. Slack goes in that direction. And it is intercepted. Picked off by Lewis. This is how Georgia wins football games, even when they're outmatched. They hang in there on offense. They create turnovers on defense. And Morris Lewis, number 57, makes a terrific catch, Brent, with a one-handed stab from the outside linebacker position. He's the quarterback is trying to throw it over his head, but he gets that left paw on there with the glove, by the way, <laughs> and makes a nice catch. When you don't, you've got a glove on. <laughs> but that's a nice, nice play. First and 10 now for Georgia. That's a second turnover by Auburn here in the first half. Johnson will pitch it to the wide man, coming back around, and Sean Hummings is buried by Brian Smith. That is the biggest defensive play of the game thus far. Brian Smith, who's played very well here this afternoon, stays at home, was not fooled. That's his responsibility, and he puts the stop on Hummings. A loss of 17 yards on that play. Johnson rolling and he'll take off 45 stopped at the 47 yard line but this will still leave Georgia with a third and long Georgia quarterbacks have always been schooled not to turn the ball over and that's why I didn't put that one up Pat an observation on Johnson uh, do you feel that maybe he takes off just a fraction of a count a little too quickly. I think with the coach, yeah, you're probably right, but I think what the coaches are saying, he's a great athlete as a runner. If nobody's open, take off now. 14 yards to go for the first down. Thomas and Hummings are the wide man. The blitz is on, and he won't get it off. Fumble recovered by Auburn at the 33-yard line. Brian Smith belted it, and Benji Rowland recovered it. For a big guy, Brian Smith can really come. He is 6'6", 244 pounds. At the top of the screen, number 90 in a down stance, runs right around the tackle and comes from the backside of Wayne Johnson. He's supposed to be picked up by Henderson. He misses him. Johnson has no chance. Rowland makes the recovery. No quarterback in the world has got a chance right here with a defender coming full force from the blind side. Jars the ball loose, and that Auburn defense comes up with back-to-back -back big plays after the interception. First, it was the sack. Then they forced the fumble. They recover it. Now Auburn and Reggie Slack in striking position. First and 10. The ball is at the dog 34-yard line. Reeves to the right side of the formation. Stanley cuts back off the strong side inside the 30-yard line and into the arms of Kurt Douglas. And Ocean Beckler goes back to Pasadena. 38-9 over Illinois. Your old alma mater, Northwestern, playing it tough. Tied at seven. Mine of Ohio <laughs> with a tough season. You're going to have to send your second son out to USC where he can get some wins. <laughs> <laughs> Second down. Five yards to go for the first down. Here's Danley behind Joseph. Cuts off that block. 
Hammers his way inside the 25 and close to a first down. That's Vince Guthrie and Terry Webster. Plenty of time here. Three and a half minutes in the first half. Auburn with a couple of timeouts left. And the ideal situation for Auburn is to use as much of that clock before they score. Don't give Georgia the ball back, but be sure you get the seven, not the three. Third and short. And given that strategy, you would expect them to pound ahead. Joseph will set up in front of them. Wigand and Tillman are the wide men. And here's the fullback, Joseph. Close. Very close. And at the conclusion of this CBS Sports College football broadcast, we'll select a Chevrolet, most valuable player of the game from each team. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to both Auburn and Georgia. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. They will measure here, so we have an official's timeout at the three-minute mark of the first half. You know, we were talking about Mike Ditka and the fact that he has elected to come down to the sidelines quickly after a heart problem. There's another coach who had heart difficulty, Vince Dooley. That much left for the first down here against Dooley's defense. And Vince was able to recover, and uh, he looks marvelous. He looks great. He's very, very active, works out a lot out there at Georgia. As we said, he's an interesting guy. Remarkable that he's been able to coach to be a head coach for that long in one place. 25th year at Georgia. His defense facing a fourth and inches. Penalty markers come down. Strong was the ball carrier, but there were flags all over the place. Before the play started, a dead ball foul. We had movement by the offensive line. Still be fourth down. Penalties have really hurt Auburn here in the first half. And like we said earlier, they have struggled when they've got down into scoring territory this year and had to settle for field goals. So instead of a first and ten, they are going to try a field goal. Win Lyle. It'll be a 46-yarder. Attempting to put Auburn ahead. On its way, and he pulled it too much. Game stays tied. Fred, how many games, Georgia games, have you seen like this? When they've really been really outmatched when you think about it, but they've been able to hang in there, create some turnovers, play good defense, and win, find a way to win in the fourth quarter. Exactly. But they have to find a response to this defense right now that has suddenly started to turn it loose. On that last series, the Auburn defense dominated this Georgia offense. Now it's first and ten. The ball on their own 29-yard line. Sadowski, the tight end, over at the left. Ellis back in. They'll run the fullback straight ahead. He comes to the 33, and Tracy Rucker brings him down. Well, West Virginia rolling toward the Fiesta Bowl. A win today, and they'll go down there. Arkansas leading Texas A&M. We'll see the Razorbacks down at the Orange Bowl two days after Thanksgiving. You get all the full details from Jim Nance coming up at halftime. Second down and six. That's Hummings in motion. And Johnson rolling in that direction. Got in too close to the defender. And Brian Smith brought him down. Brian Smith is playing exceptionally well. He has run around blockers. He's run through blockers. And he's made a couple of sacks. Again, top of the screen here, number 90, bites off the block of the tackle, goes right over him into the quarterback, Wayne Johnson. He's got tremendous sense and big size, 6'6". He can jump right over those blockers. Third and 15 for Georgia. Tackled immediately by Tracy Rock. Timeout. And while we have an opportunity, let's take a look at these two schools, Auburn and Georgia. Georgia held to minus 12 yards 
here in the second quarter. They get the punt off. Wasden tracks it down. Boy, he'll go after it, won't he? Toward that sideline. 34 yard punt. And 48 seconds left here in the first half with one timeout. And Slack has some good deep receivers. Last week he was able to bust Wagan over the middle. With one timeout remaining, they can still work the middle of the field as well as the outside route. So they can use both kind of routes here. So a slot to the wide side. Tillman the slot man. Slack, Slack goes underneath exactly that path. And I'll tell you, that little Rosden puts on a show, gets a first down. So at 40 seconds, they will momentarily stop the clock and reset the chains, and they don't have to use their timeout. Georgia is dropping the nose tackle. Goldberg back in coverage. Clock starts again. Referee's signal. And Slack straight back, throws the swing to Dan Lang. 45, 40. Down at the 37, inside of 30 seconds now. The Georgia team is calling for a timeout. The Georgia coaches are asking for a timeout, which gives that surprises me. It gives Auburn plenty of time to sort things out. Now the official signal that he wanted the timeout, Pat. I think he wants it here for a measure. For measurement, yeah. Again, that's I think a he, he made the signal pointing to himself. Let's see. Uh, we can't get confirmation on that. I, I, I don't think the dogs called timeout. They did not. We get word they did not. It was the officials. So Auburn gets a break. They've got 27 seconds. One timeout left. Tillman goes off to the right with Wagan. Remember, they brought Wagan in motion on their touchdown. And they influenced the defense. Slack under pressure throws incomplete to stop the clock and the rush champion from France was on the field for Georgia Richard Tardis number 92 one of the great stories in college football up until five years ago he had never seen a college football game didn't realize there was such a thing only knew about professional football came from the south of France and now is their leading pass rusher and when he finishes at Georgia with his six degrees or whatever he's got to go down to Australia and New Zealand and play Australian rules football he is a true renaissance man. Second and 10 for Slack. 18 seconds left here for Auburn. As time throws far side to Wigan. And he is down inside the 30-yard line with 11 seconds to go. Time enough, certainly, to attempt a field goal. Actually, you have plenty of time, really, to take two shots at the end zone, maybe two passes to the end zone, and then kick the field goal. I'm out again, Paul as they measure that gain on the far side. So getting close to a first down, helping the Auburn offense stay regrouped. Well, time out, they get their play sequence set in, and that is the distance needed for the first down. They can get it stopped here again, but with 11 seconds to go, you would expect them to throw it down into the end zone. I tell you, the fact that the ball is close to uh, the first down two times now has really given the Auburn Tigers a chance to regroup. And if Auburn was watching Monday Night Football, they'll remember what happened to Bernie Kosar and the Cleveland Browns. When you've got 11 seconds, you don't want that clock to go out all the way without attempting the field goal. In a situation where you like to give your big guy, Tillman, all six, four of them, a chance in the end zone against a short defensive back. Slack, straight back, waits for his receivers to get to the end zone, throws incomplete. Five seconds left, and now you'll have to attempt your field goal. And here they come. Win Lyle. Opportunity for Auburn to take a lead to the intermission. It's a 44-yarder. He's 10 of 17. His longest this year is 41 yards. This would be his longest of the season if he can hit it. On its way. He's got it. Auburn leads. Lyle's longest field goal of the season.
So they head to the locker room with Auburn leading Georgia 10-7 in this critical Southeastern Conference game. And let's go to New York, and here's Jim Nance. Take it away, Jim. Well, we're back in Auburn, Alabama, where the Tigers lead the Georgia Bulldogs 10-7 here at the half. Pat Hayden, we always get great college football when we come to Alabama. With the last couple of weeks, we've had the great barbecue war between Tuscaloosa and Auburn. You remember, we sent Pat O'Brien out to Tuscaloosa to Dreamland, and here Chuck's catered us the other night, and here's how our board of experts scored these two. For pure ribs, you can't beat Dreamland in Tuscaloosa, folks. But now, when it comes to pork barbecue, you got to come to Auburn and Chuck's. Can't have barbecue without white bread. Both dead even there. Very, very important is the day after, and they both tied. So, Pat Hayden, we will send both Dreamland and Chuck's these blue ribbons. And now, if I can just find a little good pizza out there. No, no wait, wait, enough is enough. We've had enough. Next week, it's quiche and white wine. No more heavy food. <laughs> All right, we're going to come back with the second half. Auburn and Georgia coming your way right after this message and a word from your local station. Chris Dickinson with the ball on the tee to kick it off for Auburn. They lead Georgia by three, 10-7. LSU has won today. Worley from a yard deep. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Worley explodes at midfield, and he is down at the 41 with Elton Billingsley. 47, perhaps saving a touchdown. A 59-yard return by Worley to start the second half. And all you need to do is give Worley just a little bit of a crease. It was set up beautifully. There was a little hole there, and he picked his way through it, picked up a nice block by Henderson. And it was just Billingsley, number 47, who came from behind, who stopped him. Great block by John Allen, a freshman linebacker, to help spring him. Now Johnson with the dogs at the line of scrimmage. Here's the toss to Hampton. Hampton behind Ellis. Cuts in for about a four-yard gain on that play. Crosses the 40-yard line. Tremendous field position in their opening series here for the dogs. And Hampton runs off. He came out of the, out of Texas in the Southwest Conference, wanted to avoid the turmoil down there, wanted to play in the I formation, and that's why Hampton came to Georgia. And as he leaves, Worley returns. He'll be the tailback behind Ellis. Sadowski backs a yard off the line and comes down it in motion. Now to the short side. Worley on a quick cutback. Powers his way close to a first down at the 30-yard line. Quentin Riggins wrapping him up. We were told that he's very powerful, and that's one of the few times today where he has taken on a defender. And the right guard and left tackle both do a nice job. Number 75, Scott Adams, he pulls and traps. Looks at, look at the left tackle, 72, Collie. And they created a little seam there for Worley to run through. First and 10 for the Dogs on the Auburn 30. The toss to Worley. Bled and butter for the Bulldogs. Worley in a foot race. They stretch him out and take him down with Craig Ogletree, 94. Bringing him down. Well, Pat, halfway mark, and some of those numbers from the first half. You know, as the second quarter was all Auburn, as you can see, the rushing yards, Danley, 110 yards. Really has played very, very well. Other than the first drive that Worley had, he only had very few yards rushing. Now in second and 12, as a result of that loss, Hampton is back the tailback behind Henderson. Sadowski to the left. This is Hampton powering ahead, and he is wrapped up at the 30-yard line. This is going to leave Georgia in third and long. And Ron Stallworth, 92, another of those talented defensive players for the Tigers, in on that stop. I was talking to Ron Stallworth this week, and what he said is, we are like family out here. I know the guys next to me. I've played with them for three or four years. I know exactly what they're going to do. Hampton still the tailback for Georgia. Johnson to throw on third down. Stallworth again, one of the defenders. Benji Rowland and Brian Smith also were there. 
there's usually one more than one Auburn defender around the quarterback. As you said, Roland was there, Smith was there, as well as Stallworth. So Steve Crumley will attempt a field goal, which can tie this game. It'll be a 46-yard field goal attempt by Steve Crumley. Check that. And that is Casey. That is Casey here from this distance, who they'll go with number three, the soccer-style kicker. He hammers it. And he ties the game. Casey ties the game in the early moments of the second half. Georgia 10, Auburn 10. We'll be right back with the Bulldogs kickoff. For that one. But right now, Nebraska has its hands full with Colorado in the fourth quarter. They lead it 7 to nothing. And on first down, Danley, who had 100 yards, is stood up by Demetrius Douglas, number 53. And Ugga like that hit. <laughs> he changes expression when the dog's tied ahead behind him. He always has that smile on his face, doesn't he? You know, I, what about your daughter, who's about to celebrate her birthday, Natalie Hayes? She is 10 years old today. She told me to bring Ugga 4 home. I don't know if I get him on the plane through the metal detector, but I may. <laughs> Second down now. Reggie Slack is back, drops it over underneath. And that is complete to his running back for a first down. Again, with the short passes due there, though, Brent, they force those linebackers to come up and play tight to the line of scrimmage. And that sets up the deeper passes and the intermediate passes. And Auburn has all three layers in their passing attack. Ball is at the Auburn 37. They're coming out. First and 10. Reggie Slack, even though he threw one interception, overall was impressive in the first half. Joseph is in front of Danley. He's the fullback. They can go to tailback. They'll fake and throw it again on first down. That's been their tendency. And again, they come underneath. They work it to the very fine tight end, Walter Reeves. David Hargett making the stop for the dogs. But it's going to leave them in second and short. And Reggie Slack's passing so far, he has been an accurate quarterback this year, completing 62% of his pass passes. But watch how he spreads the ball around, threw it to eight different receivers in the first half. Most of those this today have been downfield. Danley, middle of that defense, taking him on near that first down spot Terry Webster was certainly in there the leading tackler for the dogs coming into this game number 60 and a lot of his teammates joining in well Brent Ed King the left guard for Auburn the freshman we've talked about a couple times has really played well today and it's been unusual I think offensive guard is the difficult most difficult position to come in and play right away because so many different things happen at the guard position there he is Ed King you have to really work with your, the center on your right, the tackle on your left. You have to be able to pull and trap. But he's been able to come in and make an immediate contribution. LSU already a winner. They have clinched at least the co-championship in the Southeastern Conference. If Georgia wins, they will be in a tie with LSU. But if Auburn wins, they still must beat Alabama to gain a share of the Southeastern Conference Championship. I know that Pat Dye is very much aware of Georgia's reputation in the fourth quarter. He wants to get some scores here in the third quarter. He doesn't want a close game in that fourth quarter. A short yardage formation. Danley for the carry, and he has the first down. Demetrius Douglas making the stop, and Auburn moves the chains here at the 10-minute mark of the third quarter. The most physical football teams like Auburn is really don't come up with too many big plays in the passing game, but Auburn has been a little bit different this year. They're a physical team in the offensive line and on defense, but they still can come up with big passing plays. First down near midfield for the Tigers. Their only loss this year in Baton Rouge by a one point to LSU. The Tigers pulled that one out in the last minute and 40 seconds. The blitz is on. Slack steps away from it. Gets it off incomplete. But he was under heavy pressure that time. That was Aaron Chubb 
blitzing for the dogs. He plays very, very nonchalantly back there, doesn't it? Chubb was screaming down on him. They just gave him a little sidestep, made him miss, and then they got the, the pass off. Very cool leader, isn't he? And there's a penalty marker down on the far side, the far 50. A penalty marker was thrown, and that's why they're conferring there, and Georgia indicating that they want this one declined. An illegal procedure against the offense. There was only six men on the line of scrimmage. Be second down. The penalty is declined. Penalty declined by Georgia. Pat Sullivan, the assistant coach who won the Heisman Trophy here at Auburn, has really done a nice job working with Reggie Slack on his fundamentals. Came in as, there is Pat uh, Sullivan in the orange jacket there, signaling in the play, but really worked very hard with Slack's fundamentals. Wasden and Wagand are the wide receivers. Strong is the fullback, and Joseph now the tailback, and Joseph gets the carry. To the 48 yard line with David Hargett tackling him for the dogs. When I think of some of the great Auburn teams of the last five or six years, ever since Pat Dye has been here, it has been the offensive line which I've been most impressed with. And I think Neil Callaway, the offensive line coach at Auburn, has done a great job with these guys through the years. They come off low. They keep their feet moving, and they get their helmets right in the chest of the defenders. Third and six, right. Wagan and Wasden, the wide receivers. Wagan in motion. And they will toss to Danley, but it is well defended, and Danley breaks the tackle and works his way to the 45, where it will be fourth down. Rusty Beasley tackling him. And a chance now to watch one of the more efficient punters in college football. Number one, Brian Schulman, all year has specialized on dropping the ball inside the 20-yard line. He'll stand in his own 41. Hangs it high, and Carswell with a fair catch. There it is again at the 16-yard line. Schulman has backed him up. Tough field position for the Bulldogs against this very good Auburn defense. We'll be right back. When you're fighting for the SEC crown, special teams can win a ball game for you. Watch the coverage that Schulman gets on this punt. It was only a 28-yard punt, but no return by Carswell. And that forces Georgia to go 84 yards to get in the end zone. Schulman takes the play-by-play -play after every game and studies the impact of his punting. He says, I can't win a game, but I can sure lose one if I don't do my job adequately. Now it is first and ten. The dogs are in a hole. Coming out from their own 16-yard line. Whirling to the short side. Picks his way for a couple of yards out to the 19-yard line, and Steve Brown tackling him. Let's go to Jim Nance in New York. Now Brent, here's the latest on the Barry Sanders watch, his fifth touchdown of the day. He's got 266 yards rushing and still four minutes left in the third quarter. Let's go back to Brent. Would have been nice if he had gone to Northwestern with his brother. <laughs> Second down and long now for the dogs. Who would have made him a quarterback? Worley, <laughs> the tailback. got the call. He is forced wide. And he is out of bounds at the 26-yard line. And it's going to be close to a first down. Cheatham giving chase. Did you see what Worley did as he got near the first down marker? He really went for it on the corner. He was under fire. He's an amazing guy because he can ha he has the explosion to go 70 yards. He can get you two tough yards. And I was talking to Ron Stahl with a defensive end from Auburn. He said he's the kind of back that can really embarrass you. He can really make you look bad. Third and short. Ellis and Henderson are the blockers in front of Worley. Whoa, as he stood up that time. What a hit by Smokey Hahn. Smokey Hodge did a sensational job of reading the play. He is number 56 right here in the middle of your screen. He sees
Sousa Gord blocks down and steps up. Sousa Gord blocks down. He takes the fullback on, and he just knocks Worley's head back. That's a great play by Hodge. Alfonso Ellis, number 33, missing the block as he was coming out. Joey Hester standing at the Georgia 10 to punt. Wasden on the move. Drops back to the 31-yard line. And Georgia downs him right there. So a fine punt by Joey Hester. 44 yards and only a one-yard return. Both special team units doing well. When Pat Dye came here, he stood out and looked at this stadium, and he saw some of the old wooden rickety seats. He said, one of the first things I want to do is improve the plant here. So they closed it out. Paul Connor is the director of facilities. They brought him in. There's a wire fence down there. They put a hedge up around it. Beautiful flowers. One of the most gorgeous facilities in the land. Now Danley, the ball carrier. Bill Goldberg. Auburn indicating that they kept the ball right there. And this is the situation in a game where the offensive line really has to either win or lose this game, I think, for Auburn. The defense has done their job. It's up to the offensive line of Auburn now. That was Bob Meeks coming through and recovering that fumble, so they certainly did their job right there. It was a seven-yard gain. The ball came loose, and he pounced on it. Slack on the offense. Reeves coming in motion. Danley. There's a penalty marker down. That was Terry Webster tackling Danley as the penalty flag flew. Terry Webster, the inside linebacker, really did a nice job there, Brent. He will stand in there on the inside and take anybody on as he did Danley there. Six times for 65 yards. And at critical times. Now it'll be second and 13 for Slack. They'll give him an extra wide receiver. Tillman, Wigan, and Wasden. Joseph and Danley are the running backs. First down. You know, you marvel at guys like Wasden. Some guys have great speed. Some guys have great size. Wasden has neither of those, but he's got a great feel for the game. Knows how to get open, and when you throw him the ball, he's going to catch it. 5'9", 176 from Selma, Alabama. You come over here to the side as the play is sent in. Wigand and Wright are the wide men. Reeves back in the game. Danley on the toss behind Joseph. And he is hit right there by Vince Guthrie, number 54. I think you need balance to win in college football these days in offense. You look at the play selection that Auburn has had on first down. They've rushed 14 times and passed 12. And first down is always the key. Georgia, meanwhile, lurking in the neighborhood. Waiting for that mistake. Second and nine inside of 430 in the third quarter. Auburn and Georgia are tied at 10. Loser's going to be out in the race for the Southeastern Conference title. Slack. Slack down the middle of Wake and Wake and breaks and he's got it inside the 10 yard line. He beat David Hargett. First and goal for Auburn. Deep pass to Wagan was set up by the earlier shorter passes that Auburn threw. They threw some short passes over the middle. They hit the tight end. This time they go deep. The safety gets beaten. The corner gets beaten. That's Hargett, and that ball is well thrown. Wagan just runs under it for an easy catch. And a 40-yard gain, making it first and goal at the Georgia nine-yard line. Joseph in front of Danley. Double tight end. Here's
is Danley. He gets up to the seven yard line and it'll be second and goal. Paul Giles tackling it for Georgia. Very important for Auburn to get the ball into the end zone and not settle for the field goal here. Matt Sullivan, the Heisman Trophy winner, signaling the play in. He was the one time Auburn quarterback. That die right alongside of him, monitoring every call here. Lawyer Tillman, who caught a touchdown pass in the first half, is out to the right. Sellers and Reeves, the tight end. And Slack rolls to the left, buys time, lobs to the tight end. Touchdown, Walter Reeves. off the ball when they have to. But that was a perfect example of Reggie Slack just taking a little bit off as he found Walter Reeves at big tight end in the middle of the end zone. And the pressure is on the Georgia offense. They must have a touchdown. Well, they'll turn a seven-point lead over to Benji Rowland and friends. And it's going to be hard going for Georgia right now. They scored on their first drive of the game their touchdown and they have not scored a touchdown since settling for a field goal here in the early moments of the third quarter. Now they're down by a touchdown. They kick it away from Worley this time. They go to the short man at the 25 yard line and he busts out to the 41 yard line. Troy Sadowski the tight end with a good return. Let's go down to John Docker. You know Brent if you've been looking for David Rocker you won't find him on the field because he's down here on a bench. He re-injured his left ankle. They, he's not going to play for the rest of the day. Also interesting footnote from the Auburn defensive coaches. They say the key to the Georgia offense is the man you just mentioned number 87 Sadowski. Follow him and that's what will happen with the Georgia offense. They've been warning their team. Back to you Brent. All right John he is over on the left side. Now he'll back off and he'll come in motion changing the strength of the formation and they run away from him. Here is Worley down the short side and he is stopped just short of midfield. Greg Staples and John Wiley. An interesting point that John Dockery makes because if they are following where Sadowski is going they slant to him but this time they run away from Sadowski and Worley shows you the power 215 pounds again terrific vision from the man as well. 12 rushes for 65 yards. Remember, no back has gained better than 100 yards this year against this defense. Ellis in front of Worley. Two yards for the first down. Johnson off the fake. Has time over the middle and incomplete. He wanted Hummings. And Cheatham was all over him. Number 35, Carlo Cheatham. That was terrific coverage by Cheatham. And Cheatham is a guy who plays so aggressively, Georgia thought they could get a big play on him. He likes to come up and support the run, but he did a beautiful job of covering Hummings there one-on-one. -on -one. Wayne Johnson, only two of six, has not completed a pass since that first drive. Sadowski comes to the right side of the formation. And Worley stop short of that first down. Wiley was over there with Smokey Hodge, number 56. They call him Smokey. His first name is Ernest. I guess when your name is Ernest, you want to be called Smokey, but he has done a very nice job inside. He stopped Worley on a short yardage play twice now in this half. If I was Lou Holtz, I wouldn't want to go to the Sugar Bowl and play this bunch either. <laughs> They can play some defense. I'd say. Joey Hester standing on his 35. Wasden back deep. There's the fake. They go to the short man, and the penalty marker comes down. Keith Henderson got a first down, but the penalty marker comes down. 
There might have been an ineligible receiver downfield. And I don't know how you have an ineligible receiver downfield when you have a fake punt. But that's what they called. And it was set up beautifully for Henderson. He might be stalking whoever made that mistake. Man on the field at the ball participating 15 yard penalty. Still fourth down. It was 12 men on the field. That was the problem. And that is a problem. That's the first penalty <laughs> against Georgia here this afternoon. Now Hester standing back on his 20. He'll punt it this time. Hangs it high. He has punted beautifully all afternoon. Boston with a fair catch at the 20 yard line. Well, tomorrow, a lot of these former dogs and tigers will go to war. The Chicago Bears and the Washington Redskins, the big one at RFK. The skins always tough at home. Then Philadelphia, Pittsburgh. Buddy Ryan under fire. And a lot of rumors down south about Jimmy Johnson going to that job. Tampa Bay at Detroit. The Giants are at Phoenix late. Along with New Orleans at the Rams as a five star attraction. The Saints need that one. They may act out of desperation tomorrow. They've lost two in a row now. First and ten for Slack and the Tigers. Reeves had cut the touchdown. Moves over to the left side of the formation. Joseph the fullback into the middle of that defense. No running room there. Douglas, number 53, leading the defensive effort. You know, most I formation teams like to give the ball to the fullback once every other lunar eclipse. But Auburn really does incorporate that fullback into their offense a lot more than most teams. James Joseph has been a big factor today at fullback. For those of us who are not road scholars, that means infrequently. Yeah, that <laughs> I means not so often. <laughs> Second down now and long for Auburn. Slack brings the offense up. Tillman is slotted to his left. Wagan is out wide. Slack in with good time. Over the middle deflected and incomplete. Demetrius Douglas dropping back and deflected it. Wow. That's an Henri Tiger. Thought for a minute it was Irk Russell he was working on, but I <laughs> moved over to George Sutton. Wow. Irk has done a great job over there. He has done. show on the road, too. He was their former defensive coordinator. Dog fans remember him so well from the Herschel Walker days. Timeout has been called. Timeout by Auburn, their first one. You know, he'll come over and talk to Pat Dye. Uh, got an opportunity to see the other side of Pat Dye on Friday when all the haze in the barn. He heads out here out of town about, oh, 20, 25 minutes. Got about 1,000 acres out here. And he just loves it. Hey, I like all this attention, these visitors. Step on us, relax. Hey, I can I can come out here for 30 minutes, an hour, or just ride out here and ride back. You come in. Come in. That's a great place to put all the problems of big time football behind you. I almost stayed out. He's got a bunkhouse. I said, next time I come to town, I'd like one of those bunks. His wife loves the horses, Pat. She raised the Colts out there. There are a couple of them. He's picked up another one. He's got seven dogs, probably as many wild turkey as anybody in this part of Alabama. Coached at East Carolina, went to Wyoming. And he really got his chance here because Vince Dooley turned the job down. They almost brought Dooley back from Georgia to be the coach and the athletic director at Auburn and Pat Dye has certainly made the most of his opportunity. I guess that's the only dog that Pat doesn't like. His favorite foods are chicken and fish. Out is third down for Dye's quarterback Slack and again that offensive line gives him time. He hits Wigan first down. You know, Brent, you made a good point about this is being Reggie Slack's first big game as a starting quarterback at Auburn, but I have been impressed with him. All the big plays he has needed in this game, he's come up with. That one on a third and eight. He's a 17 of 28 for 220 yards and two touchdown passes and only one interception. And Georgia couldn't do anything with the interception. Now it is 
Packers first and ten. Danley. Very little running room. He made the most of it that time. Vince Guthrie and Aaron Chubb were there as we come to the end of the third quarter. Auburn leading Georgia 17-10. College football on CBS returns after this message and a word from your local station. It Late. belongs to Michelob. The final 15 minutes of a good ball game coming your way from Auburn, Alabama. 17-10, the Tigers with the lead, and here's how they got there. Georgia struck first on its opening series. 7-0 on a touchdown pass, but Tillman got a throw from Reggie Slack, tied at 7, and then the Tigers went ahead on a 44-yard field goal. That was the halftime margin. Then Casey nailed a 46-yarder, was deadlocked again before Reeves caught Slack's second touchdown pass. 17-10, fourth quarter underway. And this is second and six for the Tigers against the Georgia defense. Here is Dan Lee, who's had a big time day. He's hit by Virgil Cole, number 98. And that will leave them with about a third and seven. And again, another important third down for Reggie Slack. He has met the challenge most of this game on third and passing downs. Another important one for him here. Some confusion with the receivers right now. And the 25 second clock starting to run down. So with the extra wide man, Slack gets it off in time and throws complete to Tillman. First down, and again, Reggie Slack with the big play. And Reggie Slack came up holding his right hand. You can see him shaking it there. But again, watch Tillman. For a big guy, he moves his body pretty well. He runs away from the defender, number 57, Lewis, who's really a linebacker, so they had a nice match if they wanted. But Reggie falls on his hand, the right hand right there, and he came up shaking it. A lot of times after that happened, Brent, you don't know for a while that you really hurt that right hand. With the first down at midfield, Slack will throw again on first down. And he's got Tillman wide open, and it is hit at the last instant, and interference is called. Rusty Beasley came over defensively. Yeah, Reggie Slack first print shows an awful lot of patience in the pocket there. He hung in there. He knew he was going to get hit. penalty from the line of scrimmage the automatic first down you can take another look at it I think they really called it on Hargett number 25 who went diving right into it where did the ball hit him did you get a good view of that Pat it hit the helmet of uh, Beasley number 20 Oh, I, th I thought Beasley really interfered with him that time. I don't think there was any chance for him to even see the ball coming down. Slack on the roll. Throws underneath and complete. It is tight end Walter Reeves. And Slack driving the Tigers again. A 16-yard completion after the pass interference penalty. And Reggie Slack has done a nice job today of using his tight end Reeves. We saw him caught a short uh, touchdown pass earlier. Well, your tight end is a big receiver. He's 6'4", he's 250 pounds. He roams that middle on his own defense. He's been open all day, and Slack has used him. Joseph and Danley, the running backs. Right and Wazd in the wide man. And that's Reeves moving over to the left side. Him up. Well, and Georgia is going to win this game. They are going to have to stop Auburn here and force a field goal attempt. They cannot afford the way their offense is playing to allow Auburn to score another touchdown. Second and long, and Slack has answered the challenge. He's come up with big plays. Look at the marvelous second half. Fake to Danley, drops underneath and incomplete. He was going to go to look at Mark Sellers, the other tight end, and Terry Webster was there defensively. 
Third and 11. This is the most important third down for the Georgia defense. Here's where they have to have good pass coverage and a rush and force a, a sack or an incomplete pass and then force the field goal attempt. Wright and Wasden, the wide receivers for Coach Dye. Tillman goes to the slot to the left side. Auburn must get inside the eight-yard line for a first down. Slack lost it for the end zone, incomplete, and over Wright's head with Ben Smith there defensively. And now they will go for the field goal when Lyle comes onto the field. He is one for two here this afternoon. Made his longest of the season earlier. Now he will attempt a 36-yarder. And the punter, Brian Schulman, will hold it for him. Oklahoma following Notre Dame and Penn State for you here Auburn Shannon War Eagle they lead it by 10 with 12 and a half minutes to go that's Henderson 15 20 out to the 25 yard line well, Troy Aikman at last shot he was battling Stanford this afternoon down by four points he needs to come on strong now that Barry Sanders has made a rush Rodney Pete of USC unbeaten he's certainly in the chase and it looks like we got a contest oh yeah he is really coming on Barry Sanders would be a very worthy winner now Georgia needs something to climb back in it Worley the tailback here's the toss to him they run behind Henderson defensively Quentin Riggins ready Quinton Riggins is only 5'11", 210 yards, but he has a heart the size of the state of Alabama. He plays hard all game long. Well, Pat, what would you do against this Auburn defense? If you were the quarterback or the offensive coordinator, how, how would you attack it? They're dominating. I, I think you have to throw the ball. You have to complete some passes. Maybe you screen a little dink to your tight end. They have not used Sadowski in the passing game. Johnson will throw. It's deflected at the line of scrimmage and falls incomplete. That was Brian Smith, who's played a terrific game. Smith has done just about everything today. He has rushed the passer. He has played the sweep. That time he tipped the ball. The number 90, right there in the middle of your screen. Watch. This is a lost art. Guys don't do enough of this. He gets up, gets that big old left paw on it, and almost enough to create an interception. How does this Auburn defense compare with all the ones you've seen this year? The best by a long shot, no doubt. Third down, and Johnson trying to get something going against this defense. Backs up. Forced out of the pocket. There's a penalty flag down. Stallworth gets him out of bounds. It's incomplete, but there is a penalty marker down. When a, when a lineman feels so much that it was on Kurt Ball, when, on Tracy Rocker, when a lineman feels that much pressure that his quarterback is getting, it's the only thing he can do to try to create a uh, prevent the sack. Georgia forced the punt. Hester standing on his own six-yard line. Booms one and drives Wasden back to the 31-yard line. And he's down at the 35. Great punting today by Joey Hester. That's a 47-yarder and a four-yard return. Auburn with a chance to run the clock down. We'll be right back. LSU today wrapped up at least a tie for the Southeastern Conference. 
Georgia needing a win today. Auburn needs one here. Then they must beat Alabama. The Crimson Tide out of it. And the Tiger Auburn! fans are alive. 85,000 folks on hand here this afternoon. They lead it by 10 points with 11 and a half minutes to go. Auburn's ball on their own 35-yard line. And now Pat Dye will go to work on that clock. They start Danley on the toss, running him wide. He cuts back up. He's had a sensational afternoon running the football. Bill Goldberg, the nose man, backing off. Danley has carried 31 times for 139 yards here this afternoon. The amazing thing, Brent, he looks fresh. He looks like he wants to tote the ball another 10 times here in the fourth quarter. Second and three for Auburn. Toss to the wide side with Danley. And he breaks through. There's a penalty flag down. Danley gets to the 47-yard line for a first and 10, but the penalty flag thrown. You know, Brent, as Auburn has opened up this 10-point bulge, this is not what jo uh, Vince Dooley wanted in the fourth quarter. The defense is going to have to come up with some sort of turnover to get back in the ball game. And holding by an offensive lineman at the line of scrimmage. Ten-yard penalty still be second down. That's been the biggest weakness in the Auburn game here this afternoon against Coach Dooley. Seven penalties for 75 yards against Auburn. And the ball has marched off back to the Tigers' 32-yard line. And instead of a first and 10, it'll be second and 13. Clock down to 10 and a half minutes. Tell Jim Nance to get that post-game show ready in New York, boys. <laughs> Second down. Here's Slack off the play fake. Stands in that pocket and throws beautifully underneath the Danley, the running back. He's out to the 44, and Demetrius Douglas brings him down. It'll be third and long. Well, that's a play I don't think teams use enough. You fake the ball to the tailback, and then he runs that little delay for you. He was wide open before Douglas found him. Reeves had left the formation, and now he returns. Wagand and Tillman are off to Slack's left. Stopped at the 45 by Terry Webster. Auburn forced to punt it away. Nine and a half minutes. You may get a measurement here. Wagan signaling he got it. He did. First down, Auburn. And that's a big play. It was only one yard, but it got you a chance to have four more downs and use some more of the clock. Big first down for the Tigers. There's a remarkable calm about that man, Reggie Slack. You talk to his teammates, and they are amazed about his poise and presence and just the calm about the man. Ball at the 45 of Auburn. They lead it by 10. This is Dan Lee. Sweeps outside to the left. Norman Cowens wraps him up, but this will put him in second and short, and the clock continues to move. Downstairs to John Dockery, Doc. Thank you, Brent. This is Walter Julep, Dallas Cowboys scout. And Walter, why do the Auburn players do so well in a pro? Well, I think there's two reasons, uh, John. Number one, Coach Dyer really demands a lot of the physical game. I mean, they take a lot of physical uh, abuse and, and work. And when they get to our place, they're not intimidated. Another thing is they're playing in front of 85,000 people in a big, tough uh, pressure situation. So when they get to an NFL training camp, they're not intimidated. Walter, if you'd stay with me for a minute, we're going to go upstairs and come back down. Second and short here. And they don't get the job done that time as Terry Webster comes in on James Joseph. And uh, let's go back down. A hey, hey, uh, Doc, yes. I thought Gil Brandt was the only scout for the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Let's go back downstairs. They actually have more of an organization than just Gil Brandt. What about Jim Worley? What kind of a player is he? Well, I, I'm looking forward to evaluating him next year. But right now, he's the closest thing I've seen to, you know, kind of a uh, 
mix between Bo Jackson and our guy Herschel Walker, and even Brent Fullwood, who played here at Auburn. Boy, those, that's a lot of praise. Now back to you, Brent. All right, Doc, thank you very much. Third down, so the scouts looking beyond the tough afternoon, and they still see that raw talent there from Tim Worley. Three yards to go for the first, Pat. And this third down is the, de is the game for the Georgia defense right here. And Slack will put it up. Throws incomplete, and they hold. And this time, they have forced the punt by Schulman. Terry Webster and Vince Guthrie over there on coverage for Coach Dooley. The Georgia defense really has done their job. Now it's up to Wayne Johnson to complete a couple passes to give the dogs a chance. What about going after this punt? You, know, you have to do that sometimes. Special teams can win a ball game for you as well. They set the return. Schulman angling one. Beautiful punt. And it got into the end zone for a touchback. Almost bounced up there at the one, didn't it? So it'll be first and ten for Georgia. Ball on the 20 when we come back. How good is that defense? You can see the possessions by Georgia. That tells the story right there. And I think the real key has been they haven't completed any passes since that first drive. Everyone satisfied here in Auburn? <laughs> You bet. He'll stay a football fan all his life. First and ten. Hampton goes in motion for Johnson, and now they'll throw on first down. He throws to Hampton, who had swung out, bust back to the 25, 30, and on out to the 38 with Alvin Mitchell bringing him down a 13-yard gain. And that's the perfect kind of pass for Georgia to run. Not high risk. It's a little screen pass. You give a guy like Rodney Hampton a chance to get out in the open field. Hampton the tailback. Thomas and Hummings are the wide men. Hampton again out and under great pressure. He throws complete to Hummings. And another first down. And Johnson was under enormous pressure from Craig Ogletree. Wouldn't this be something? And that means uh, USC would go to the Rose Bowl regardless of what happens next week. Michigan. Advancing to the Rose Bowl today. Play the Pac-10 representative. Now first and ten. Here's the toss to Hampton. Picking his way and ever so quickly that hole closes with Smokey High. You know, fancy offense wins some games, but defense wins championships. And what you're seeing here by Auburn is a championship-style defense. Smokey Hodge on the inside as the linebackers played remarkably well. And Brian Smith, the outside linebackers, had a great game, too. Six and a half minutes. Georgia needing to hurry. Straight back. Stallworth on him. There's the penalty marker down, indicating that there was holding. Pass was incomplete, intended for Warner, the tight end, who had replaced Sadowski. That protective pocket starting to break down. When you allow this Auburn defense to tee off, it is really something. What makes them great pass rushers, Brent, is they have a great first step and escape move. All stalwart rolling in. Rock holding on the play by the offensive team. Repeat second down at the 10 yard. You know, I don't blame an offensive lineman for holding. A lot of times you don't get caught. You hold them and hope it no one sees you. Georgia penalized 10 yards. Arthur Marshall brings the play in from the sideline. Second down, about 19 yards to go for the first down. Henderson and Hampton are the running backs. Worley has not played this series. Johnson back. Diving reception over there. And a fine catch. They'll rule it incomplete. Is that Carlo Cheatham over there defensively? Let's see what happens here. All right, they thought they had it on the far side. The coaching staff thought the pass was complete. Well, that's a big play. It's number nine, John Thomas. And that ball is caught 
by John Thomas. That should have been a reception. That official there behind was blocked yeah, out. There's no way that that official could make he, that call because he's out of position. It was, and Dooley explaining it to him that he was in behind the play. And that is a big, big moment in this game. It would have been a first down. Now it is third down. Johnson back again. Pocket collapses, and it's complete over the middle. He's going to be short of the first down, however, with Staples and Wiley stopping him. At this point in the game, Matt, you would fully expect him to line up and try to go for the first down. They have to go for the first down right here in this situation. You give the ball to your best runner, Tim Worley, in the I formation. Wayne Johnson really took a big hit, and he came up limping a little bit. He's scrambling around there and gets hit by Stallworth, number 92. Less than a yard, and Worley is back in the game. Henderson, the fullback, they'll toss it to Worley, stretches the defense out, and the defense responds with Smokey Hodge leading the way for Auburn. will get the credit but watch the free safety right here here is a uh, Hodge but watch the free safety number 20 that is Chan Morris really come up quickly as well Morris takes out the blocker that leaves Worley naked and Hodge makes the play that's great team defense Auburn takes over on downs at the five minute mark leading 20 to 10 Teapot Brown is in at fullback, and Danley slanting off to the left. Terry Webster bringing him down. You know, Brent, the fact they didn't make the first down there makes that catch by John Thomas even more important because he did catch that ball and would have had the first. Second down for Auburn. Clock continuing to run. Georgia with all three of its timeouts, but they're behind by 10. It's uphill now for the dog. Danley through a hole. He squeezes out a first down. That was a big hole on the left side. And in this time of the game, when everybody knows you're going to run the ball, you don't find too many big holes. But again, Ed King and Jim Thompson on the left top side did a great job. We want to take another look at that controversial call because there seems to be little doubt but that he caught the ball. Watch the official in behind. He appeared to be screened. Thomas diving has the ball. He's right in behind him. And then he came up and called incomplete. It certainly appeared to be a completion from that particular angle. Danley is stopped near the line of scrimmage. A bad break for Georgia. Vince Guthrie up with the tackle because, as Pat Hayden said, that would have been a first down and allowed them a fresh set of downs. Instead, they were stopped on fourth and short and give Pat Dye's defense a lot of credit for taking on Tim Worley. I suppose on second thought, they might have thought about running Worley as a decoy and coming up with Henderson, the fullback. Pretty easy to second guess that call right now. <laughs> Come up here, yeah, absolutely. Second down, nine yards to go for Slack and the Tigers. Here's the toss to Danley. And penalty marker comes down. Vince Guthrie comes up to make the stop, number 54. But there is a penalty flag, and Guthrie appears to be shaken up, slowly getting up. And we head for Oklahoma, Nebraska. Next week, the winner to go down to the Orange Bowl. Had a clip by the offensive team on the run. A replay the down after a 15-yard penalty. Tigers penalized 15 yards. Still another penalty against the Tigers. It's amazing this late in the season they've had so many penalties. You expect that early in the year, but Pat Dye, Dye has to be really disappointed with all the penalties. I got an idea, Pat. Let's take the winner of the Southeastern Conference, the Southwest, the WAC, the ACC, the Big Eight, the top independent, two at large, eight teams, and let's play a tournament in college football. Let's have those first two Saturdays in December, and let's get a national champion decided on the field. No argument for me. 
Second down now and 24 yards to go. Here's Stanley on the delay. Coming out to midfield. Time running down. Pat Dye and Auburn very much in control of this game. Danley has rushed 37 times for 166 yards. Bo Jackson once carried 38 times in a game. There's the penalty flag as Danley set sail on that mark. Paul Giles tackling him, but the penalty marker mm -hmm. was thrown. Before the ball was snapped, we had to land the game by the offensive team. Still be third down. Let's present this week's Toyota Leadership Awards now. Those players have been singled out for outstanding performance, team contributions, academics, and citizenship. From Georgia, Richard Tarditz, the Renaissance man. He's getting his master's degree in international business. He's from France and from Auburn, Win Lyle. He's a pre-med major from Auburn, Alabama. Toyota donates $1,000 to both these fine schools. Reggie Slack handing it off, and Danley sets sail to Put his name in that Danley Auburn record book with that carry right now. Obviously, they're aware of that mark. And Pat Dye quickly calls the punting team back for a huddle. Now they'll come out with Shulman leading the way. Two minutes left, and it's a 10-point lead. And Georgia has to think block here. They have 10 men up the line of scrimmage. The only chance they have is to block a punt. Auburn letting that clock run down. They may even take a delay of game here. They will. They'll back him up still another five yards, but they ran the time off. 140 left on the scoreboard. We're going to get all the scores and highlights. Snap, the delay of the game by the Jim picking Nance. team. Still it's a shame that you and I have to run for the airplane right away, Pat, but we've got to be someplace. I think Jimmy and Eric can handle it. I think they do an admirable job. <laughs> Just kidding, Jim. Here's Schumann. Hangs one high, and that's Carswell. Look at that punch. He's dropped him down inside the 10-yard line with a minute and a half. Three times, Schulman has buried him back there. That's a 45-yard punt. He's the master. So tomorrow, come along and watch Mike Ditka as he returns to the Chicago Bears. Take on Joe Gibbs and the Washington Redskins at 12.30. We'll look at linebacker Mike Marshall, who moved to Washington this year. Then Philadelphia at Pittsburgh. We'll hear from Chuck Knoll at 12.30. Tampa Bay goes down to Detroit. The Giants play out in Phoenix. And we've also got the Rams and the Saints as Johnson pulls back into his own end zone, eludes the would-be tackler, throwing on the run, and the diving reception there at the 18-yard line by Troy Sadowski. Let me ask you I Wilbur. guess I said Mike Marshall it should have been Wilbur Marshall the linebacker. I remember old Wilbur boy what a player he was at Florida and is in the pros as well. Final seconds. Under pressure throws complete he hit John Thomas. Let me ask you a question. What do you think about the Sugar Bowl situation? Let's just assume Auburn goes on and just assume for the moment they beat Alabama. You have a tie LSU and, and Auburn for the conference championship. How, and the Sugar Bowl doesn't have any criteria they use to select the Sugar Bowl representative. They probably need a, a tie-breaking scheme. Now, when they played each other, and if that's your first tiebreaker, Auburn losing that game to LSU, so the Tigers would go under that tiebreaker. Somewhat unfortunate. Johnson over the middle, and it is caught beautifully by Thomas. And Thomas is inside the 35-yard line. A 31-yard gain, and uh, he's demonstrated some fine ability here in the fourth quarter. 49 seconds to go. A high school quarterback, a highly recruited high school quarterback, along with Wayne Johnson, made the move out to wide receiver and made some nice catches today. 
time running out on the dogs. We'll be right back. Auburn leading by 10. 49 seconds to go. And Georgia threatening. Thomas to the left. Johnson is back again. Has time. Throws to Hampton. It's complete at the 11 yard line. It'll be first and 10. And the clock will stop until they move the chains. The quarterback, Johnson, has to get everybody up at the line of scrimmage so he doesn't lose any valuable seconds. 43 seconds to go. Cummings out there with Thomas. Johnson. And it's deflected, second down. And that was Brian Smith, who has played a great game, number 90, who deflected that pass. The second deflection for Smith, again, he's a big, tall guy who knows if he can't get to the quarterback, he's going to get those big old arms up and knock the ball down. Thirty-three seconds to go. Second down and ten. Thomas over on the left. Marshall wide to the right. Throws incomplete in the end zone. Terrific coverage by Cheatham. And that ball was thrown on a rope to Arthur Marshall, number 12. For a moment, I thought he was going to catch it. But there were an awful lot of bodies around him. 27 seconds to go. Third and 10. Auburn leading by 10 and Georgia threatening. They'll take two cracks at the touchdown. Cummings and Thomas go to the right. Johnson drops it for Henderson who caught it incomplete he was out out of bounds John Wiley the defender there I think that's a good call by the official some of the Georgia fans are upset but watch this ball he's got to come down inbounds even though he gets pushed out what even close even though he is hit out, he must come down with at least one foot in. Fourth down from the 12. Auburn leading it by 10, 20 to 10. 21 seconds to go. Thomas to his left. Marshall to the right. Looks Thomas incomplete. the Sugar Bowl that Auburn undoubtedly will be ranked higher than LSU and if they beat Alabama they'll maintain that position and the Sugar Bowl just might say that they're going to go with the higher ranked team because Auburn beats Georgia here this afternoon by 10 the oldest rivalry in the deep south coach Pat Dye prevails over his alma mater goes across the field seeking out coach Dooley two class gentlemen down to John Dockery doc coach coach can I have you for a second coach you said you needed balance off balanced offense to win you got it well you know Reggie was had a great day throwing the football and uh, we feel like that in our conference the way they play defense you got to be able to throw the football and Georgia did a great job of throwing the football today and but uh, it was a you know it was a team win our kicking team for, except for the kickoff return did a great job defensively we, we they made some plays running the football but overall I thought we did a great job against a running game and then our offense kept the football away from them which was very important for us coach do you know that LSU won today I know they won and and, and I expected that so we just play them. We got Alabama now, and they got a great football team. Alabama may be the best team in the conference, 
that that uh, we we haven't played yet. But you have to feel that your defense can shut them down. Well, I think our defense can play with anybody in the country. And uh, I, you know what what you saw against the great Georgia football team, they run in the football. And 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 believe me, they're for real. I mean, you get down here on the field with them, you saw them. Uh, I got to be I got to be mighty proud of our defense and. It just, uh, but again, our offense kept the pressure off the defense by controlling the football. Well, Coach, Thank congratulations. Thank okay, you. now back to you, Brent. How good was that defense, Doc? Well, Georgia came in here averaging 286 yards on the ground. They were held to 71. And Pat Hayden, didn't you love the way Coach Dye started blowing smoke <laughs> in the general direction of Tuscaloosa already? Why, uh, that's the best dang football team we haven't played yet this year. You always year. say that about your next they opponent. They are so yeah. talented. I don't know if my little old boys can stay on the field with them. Well, we got a full recap coming your way. Let's go to New York now. Here's Jim Nance. Yeah.